Um, so I'm fascinated by artists who use their self as a subject. And, uh, you know, in lesser hands, that becomes like an exercise in narcissism. And it's kind of like, you know, what the hell's the point? Um, but I love it when it's used in a way that uh, is kind of fearless and original and beautiful and gets to something like deeply uh, universal. You know, and it's such a great example of how if you're uh, willing to risk, you know, yourself and tell the truth that other people identify with that. And, uh, you know, uh, I think Portland actually has a proud tradition of, of self as subject uh, artists, and they would include, and this is by no means an exhaustive list, but uh, the filmmaker Larry Johnson, who made a great film called Stuff. Um, and uh, if I may say so, the uh, writer Cheryl Strayed, <laughs> Wild, who you may have heard of. Never heard um, of her. And of course, Stephen O'Donnell. And what I love about Stephen's work is that it, um, I mean, it's so interesting to me that here you are, you know, um, Here's a, a man painting himself in, in a dress, and yet everyone, I think, looks at that and sees something universal. And it's like they look at that and they question their own identities and assumptions. And uh, there's just something very um, fearless and inspiring about it. So I'm just so happy that Stephen agreed to, uh, to come here and uh, be thrilled <laughs> by me. And uh, it's also exciting that you'll be able to ask questions, too. So I'll, just, I'll start the ball rolling. Um, Hi, Stephen. Hi. <laughs> um, and you're so, awfully close. I'm sorry. <laughs> do I, do I, is, is it obvious? <laughs> you're up so, against I'm a the wall. Shy, but yeah. So, as an art form, what is it about the portrait that fascinates you? And can you tell us about your decision to focus on self portraits? What fascinates me? Um, you know, it's kind of hard to answer that question because it's all, they've always fascinated me since I was, you know, since I started looking at art when I was a kid, um, looking at, at art in, in books, because that was my first um, exposure to art. Um, we didn't live in places where I saw it and where I could go to a museum most of the time. So, um, but, um, you know, I was kind of an, I'm, I'm not sure. It's not something I really examined, but, I, you know, I was kind of an outsider because my, my uh, dad was in the Air Force. So we moved a lot. So, you know, I was always a new kid, was kind of solitary. So I'm sure there must be some sort of connection with um, people at a distance mm -hmm. or, 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 or people, um, a portrait, it, when, it's, when it's good, um, is, is the, it's kind of like that person's story in that picture. Right. Um, but they're safe. <laughs> They're not going to come out and say anything to you. Um, <laughs> so, but my doing self-portraiture was, uh, I'm not sure how that happened at all because I didn't do self-portraiture really at all until right before I started showing professionally. Um, I did some crazy um, work of, of based on my childhood with a whole lot of Frida Kahlo angst um, thrown in, you know, just way over the top of oh, the tortured child, you know. Um, and they got me a show. Um, and it kind of just um, followed from there. I mean, one of the things that, that uh, maybe you touched on it, or maybe I just remember from one of the questions that, um, is that um, I can, t I can, I love the portraiture. But if you do a portrait of somebody else, it's about them. And so then uh, the audience's response to it is, you know, it's about that person rather than this, whatever story um, is in the painting. And that's, so that's why it's sort of like doing myself as a subject. Um, it can be about the story, and, and people aren't necessarily conflicted by this other person there. Um, you know, they're not distracted by that. So. Um, so it's kind of like a shortcut, and I and I just kind of fell into it, and it's like it's worked for me, and um, it's just easy, you know. I mean, I, you know, unless it's unless it's a nude or something like that that I want to do, I'm going to use myself because then then I'm out of the way, you know. It's just it's the painting and the artist, and it isn't about anybody else. So, uh. how do you get past uh, that little voice in your head that we all have of like? Mm. Oh, I wish I, you know, didn't look so tired today. Or, you know, like, are you, are you after, are you, are you going just for like how you look, or is it kind of a stylized? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, because I, 
because one of my biggest goals is to make something beautiful. So um, I can, you know, I'm not afraid to, uh, you know, glamorize myself or give myself a thin waist or, I mean, I was thinner, you know, 12 years ago <laughs> when painting was done, but, you know, I'm never as thin as, you know, some of the waists are or, or my, shoe, my feet are not as small as the little shoe coming out or, or whatever um, in, in a given painting. Um, because it is about, I, again, it isn't about making an accurate portrait of somebody, which I would have to do if I was doing a portrait of somebody else. It's like, I can, you know, I'll leave off my freckles if they don't add anything to the right. picture or, or whatever, you know. I, in a kind of a reverse vanity, I have kind of forced myself in the last couple of years to get a little older in my paintings. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, I don't want to be embarrassed. It's like, oh yeah, he's like 70 years old and he's still painting himself at 19, you know, it's a little bit undignified, so, yeah. yeah. Can you describe just a little bit of the, uh, the kind of mechanics of, of painting yourself? Do you use a photo, a mirror, and also maybe you could describe the, the physical space you were mm -hmm. in when you were painting that, mm -hmm. your workspace? And I have to go back to 2002, which is not, you know, I was living in a different place. I was actually living in my grandmother's house at the time. She had moved to assisted living, and um, so this, body of work that this was done from um, was just in my very lovely living room library, you know, where I lived alone. I wasn't married at the time, and I could do everything the way I wanted to. Um, and, uh, <laughs> you, you will have your chance, I promise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I, I, I looked out on a beautiful garden. You know, that was what the window showed. And so it was very nice. Um, what was the rest of the question? Well, I'm, I'm just curious, like, mm. how did you? Well, the mechanics yeah, of Yeah, the mechanics of it. Um, I generally work from photographs. Um, at the time, I used less, I did less uh, preparation than I do now. Now I do uh, drapery photographs. Um, at that time, I was basically making things up, you know, with my understanding of how things were. Now it's like, you know, I, 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 my, um, I'm, I'm fussier than ever. So, um, yeah, I will use, I will do preparatory photographs. So I, you know, and li get the lighting and I'll Photoshop all sorts of elements together to just, just to make it easier on myself um, because the work is so metic meticulous and the way I paint, I can't like redo things very well. So I had to get it right the first time or I'm screwed, so. Um, and the way I paint is, on flat panel, um, I draw it out, um, and then I, there's a bright gold wash under everything, and I paint on top of that. And I basically, it's kind of peculiar, but I work from the background, whatever's the farthest <laughs> thing away is where I start, and I work it up completely there, and then work a little bit forward. So, like the sky was the first thing that would have been done in that, and then the window frame, and then the background, and then maybe the floor. Um, yeah, so just trying to work forward so there isn't, you know, so I'm always overlapping, you know, what I don't want to like paint something beautifully in the front and then have to do the background and it kind of slops over the side. So right. it's just, it's kind of peculiar, but that's, that's the way I do it, you know, so. So if I understand you correctly, mm -hmm. by putting yourself in the painting, mm -hmm. we're better able to identify with whatever narrative you're creating. Well, you don't have to worry about, it's like, oh, who is that? You know, does it look like them? Um, you know, what are they trying to say, you right. know, about that person, you know? Now, did you know that the viewer would have that experience uh, before you started doing self-portraits, or was that something that you wanted to do self-portraits anyway and you found out? I, th they... well, I didn't, I mean, I didn't set out to do self-portraits. You know, I, you know, I always did portraits of people before, you know, like when I was a teenager, I was doing movie stars, you know, beautiful, you know, pictures of movie stars, you know, not, not <laughs> junky ones, but you know, but, um, but you know, they still were, you know, and before that, when I was younger, I was doing pictures of, you know, Marie Antoinette, you know, and, and uh, whatever, you know, um, so, so um, I lost, I lost the question there. Well, <laughs> I think you answered it. Okay, good. So let's get to the, let's get to yes. the meat of it. Yes, yes. Why the dress? Well, mm. <laughs> um, without getting too personal, but I mean, you know, I think a lot of people have, uh, you know, the, the spectrum of gender, you know, you know, and there's another, there's a parallel spec, uh, spectrum of, uh, or, is spectrum the right word? Yeah, 
of, of um, sexuality. And, you know, and, you know, so, so the, the female side of me has always been really strong. Um, and, you know, when I was a kid, you know, I was, I was definitely the sissy boy, you know, um, putting on mom's high heels and, going, you know, <laughs> clomping around the, you know, the house. And um, so that's always, you know, it's always been there. Um, but basically, <laughs> you be quiet, Mom. Um, <laughs> I think she did, yes. She's known for that, yes. <laughs> but, um, you know, basically, the, the, why I do what I do is for myself. Um, and so, you know, and, and that, there's all sorts of layers of that, but one of them is that I can just, um, I can put on the pretty dress and, you know, walk down the grand staircase, or I can, you know, things I can't do in reality, or wouldn't feel, not, not, it's not so much a, a question of being, um, that, I, that I'd be embarrassed because of what society would think. It's that physically, I can't do it, you know? I can't, I, you know, I could put on a hoop skirt, but I can't get my waist that small. So it's like, right. I, if I can't do it right, I'm not gonna do it, you know? So, but in my paintings, I can do whatever I want. You know, um, so so that's part of it. Um, also, you know, pictorially, I think women's dress is much more interesting. You know, for the most part, you know, you have to go back pretty far to get to <laughs> you know men's clothes that were you know as you know fabulous as as women's clothes. You know, so yeah. And I love fashion history. I love you know I love all of that stuff. So it's like I. Actually, when I was younger, I didn't want to become an artist, even though that's my whole identity, you know, growing up, um, because I wanted to do all those other things, too. Um, I wanted to be a fashion designer, you know, uh, uh, or a costume designer, a set designer, you know, filmmaker. Um, Don't you do know? that. <laughs> <laughs> you made, you made yeah. a good choice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but also, uh, I, would, I would be along the lines of Visconti or something. And they don't they have budgets like that for that kind of movie. Anymore. And you also yeah. sing, right? Yeah, yeah. And I definitely, you know, so I actually stopped uh, doing art you know, like in my 20s and, and sort of pursued a bunch of those things. And, um, and except for the singing, you know, I get to do everything, all of those, all of those disciplines. Um, inform what I'm able to do in, in my paintings, so, yeah. So is this your mother? Yeah. Hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, I, I, Don't ask I'm so any glad questions. you're here. I, 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 uh, because don't. One thing I really, no, don't, don't. Uh, but I, I want to, I want to tell you as a parent how impressed I am because, um, you know, when I was researching about Stephen, uh, you know, growing up uh, in a military family that moved around a lot, staying in a lot of rental houses, but he was allowed to draw on the walls with crayon <laughs> murals. About ten, about ten years old, we started cleaning things up. <laughs> well, that's so cool that you let him do that. Uh, well, I don't think she could stop me. I, I think it was, was he yeah. was he in the murals that he would draw? Oh no, just a bunch of I don't know. Do you remember? I don't. Just, I don't know. <laughs> Very nice. Um, I'm curious. You know, as a filmmaker, uh, I see uh, sometimes I see earlier works of mine with an audience, and uh, it's it's revelatory, and and it makes me just seeing the film with them makes me see the film in a different way, if that makes any sense. I'm just curious, as you're sitting here looking at the painting, uh, is there something about the group of us being here that allows <laughs> you to see it in a different way than if you're just alone seeing it? Um, and if you just say no, it's going to be really <laughs> uncomfortable. <for> <laughs> Try to come up with something. <laughs> I, you know, I, I think I, it, I don't know if I can see my work in, in any way that would be similar to anybody else seeing it. I'm incredibly critical. I'm always like striving to, to improve, you know, um, trying to find that balance between um, what, what my intentions are and what my skill at that point is. Um, because I think that's what makes successful work. Um, and you know, you don't always, you can't always do that. <laughs> you're sometimes striving to do more than you're actually able to do at that time. Um, and so, so I look at it very, I look at my work um, later on very analytically, you know, very uh, judgmentally even. Um, 
the work I'm doing at the time, it's like, well, that's pretty good, you know. But but you know, go go forward a few years, and maybe I won't feel the same way. Um, the interesting about this piece, though, is it's. So, I think this was this 2002. So this is a, a little short of midway of my career so far, um, and I think this is the first time I really um, sort of committed to just. You know, doing what I wanted to do. This is what I, I, I call the show. They had a French title, but I call it the, the white dress show, because you know I just like all of the all the paintings were me in a big white dress, and and there before then there was various things. There were some of that and some of other things. <laughs> I can't remember what they are at this point. But um, so I mean, so this is kind of interesting in the fact that it is. I mean, that nobody else is going to. You know, think about this much probably, but but to me, it's just kind of like planting my foot, you know, and saying, okay, this is this is what I'm going to do, right. and that's that's it. I'm not going to try to do things. Cause I, you know, I think it's hard for any artist to not um, do thing. I mean, to to not think about what are pe what people are going to think about it. You know, is this are they going to be able to sell this painting? You know, or you know, that kind right. of thing. You know. Um, because that is part of the deal, you know. Um, and I think if you, I mean, if you, if you're, if, what am I trying to say? Um, yeah, I just dried up, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm curious, so as you're painting yourself, and are you, thinking like do you come up with a whole narrative in terms of like is this like a moment before going out and you know there's this great <laughs> evening awaiting uh, or how, what is well, it you know it's not as a very satisfactory answer but a lot of a lot of what i do is extremely intuitive you know the the idea is i you know it's not as simple as i have always said it but but you know ideas would just kind of pop into my head fully formed you know i i'm absorbing the stuff I like, you know, um, the images I like all the time, and just uh, you know, reveling in it. And I and I feel like that just you know, I feel like a sponge. I've got all that stuff in me, and every right. once in a while, these things will just come to me. And you know, and I will, I'll have to jot things down and make sure I remember them. But um, you know, I don't always know the the source. I do know um, something about this group of work, though, because. Um, at the time, I was kind of fascinated by um, there's a, a mistress of Napoleon III, so mid 19th century, the Comtesse de Castiglione. I give her the French pronunciation of her Italian name because she was <laughs> she had a French you know emperor as her lover, so you know. Um, but she, very famous figure in the in the history of photography, actually, because she. Was very self-obsessed with her, with her obsessed with her beauty, and had lots and lots of weird photographs taken. And um, a group of them, even though it wasn't a dress, it was actually a. I'm getting pedantic here, but it was a a wrap, but it was heavy white satin, and it's just like uh, kind of like, ooh, I want to do you know big white satin crinolines and things. So, so I mean, that's definitely where that came from, and you know. At this remove, I can't tell, but I mean, you know, maybe that's what has uh, something to do with the mirror, because she was definitely fascinated with herself, and that's what her photography was about, you know, memorializing her beauty, and you know, she was looking in all the time, you know. So, I want to open it up to questions in just a minute, but first, I just want to ask, mm. uh, what are you working on now? How can we see your work, and how can we <laughs> buy your work? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I'm working on kind of more of the same, more elaborate, um, larger. Um, you know, I started off this big. You know, by 2002, I got in that big, and you know, it's it's always a struggle to make them larger. So, large for me is like 30 by 40, maybe. You know, that's that's as big as I've gotten so far. But um, but to continue um, producing the work, <clears throat> I always say that the work I do is to give me something to see, you know, because you know there's a lot of contemporary work that uh, I, I don't get, you know, 
Um, I basically, my artistic sensibility stopped in the middle of the 19th century. Um, and so um, that's, where I, that's what I'm processing. That's what I'm working on. Um, and you know, just the, the, the audience to my work um, can do what they want with it, you know, and they do. You know, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, discussion about what it means and am I making a statement and, um, you know, the sub maybe even subversive, you know, content of the man in a dress. Um, and I think in a way for me, um, cause that just, that's natural for me to do that. I don't, I'm not trying to make a statement. It's just that that's where I'm having my fun. But I think if, if I am subversive in a way, um, it's that um, I want to bring um, beautiful or pretty or um, retrograde work out. Um, and if that's what gets people to it by making it, by, by the man in dress making it edgy in some way that, that because if this is just a woman in a dress, you know, we're going to go, oh, well, OK. You know, <laughs> you know it's, it's not going to be looked at the same. So, so I feel like I'm being subversive in, in maybe uh, bringing what I want to see um, through, that, through that door, you know, bringing, bringing people in to see, to see the work. Um, it's almost like tricking them a little bit, you know? <laughs> and and, and yeah. maybe that's the most modern element of your work. Well, yeah, right? probably, yeah, yeah. So. Yes? I have a question. Uh -huh. I'm struck by that, um, by that powerful, powerful beam of light that you say really across mm -hmm. the piece. And to, to me, it attracts my eye to that clock-like window above. Mm -hmm. So to me, when I look at that, it's a memento mori. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to ask you about your relationship then to genre. Because I would agree with you that um, at sort of thinking about it, as, I wouldn't have thought it was a man in a dress. But if that doesn't maybe kind of lure or tempt people to go back and look at genre um, with a new eye. Genre in which way? What do you mean? So like a memento mori. I uh -huh. look at that and I think it's a memento mori. Uh -huh. she, she's looking at the mare she's going to die. Right, so right, right. It could have been a skull. It's a mare. Right. Right. But the, the window looks like a clock to me. Mm. The beam of light is like the day is, you know, mm. passing. Yeah. Um, what, what's a memento mori? A uh, memory of death, a reminder yeah. of death. <laughs> so it's a didactic yeah. piece that yeah. says you are going to die. Okay. <laughs> die. Yeah, like time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> time passes and we all, yeah, go there. Um, that wasn't my intention. <laughs> my intention is, you know, um, have compositional intentions, which are, you know, you got something going this way, you need to balance it out. And I'm always working with, with diagonals um, and, and then intentionally leaving some spaces blank, you know. So it's more compositional than, than you know, I, I want to be able to say there's, there's more there for me, but there, you know, sometimes isn't. It is, you know, uh, but, but maybe there is. You know, because um, I'm processing this stuff all the time. I, I'm, you know, I totally leave it up to my subconscious. You know, I'm, I'm very uncalculating in the intent of my work, um, but it doesn't mean it doesn't mean anything. You know, I trust that I'm going to be working out stuff. You know, so. Why do you use acrylic? I see rather uh, than. Um, <laughs> it's probably tidier. <laughs> Makes less mess. Um, when I was younger, I did I did oil painting. Also, um, I don't have a terribly steady hand, so it's it, it dries quickly. You know, it dries really quickly, and that helps a lot. I mean, you definitely have to um, work with the medium and. You know, it has its challenges. You know, I have I've had to figure out ways to get smooth finishes on things, which you know, using mediums or or layering, I, I layer a lot, thin, almost like washes, you know, of paint. Um, especially now, probably more now than I did then. But um, yeah, it's just yeah, it's, it's tidier, and you know, and I can get the same the same the the stuff I want. I mean, it kind of looks like. 
um, glazes of oil paint. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> Yes, Liz. <laughs> um, so I'm really fascinated by the fact that you created this 12 years ago. Yeah. And here it is today. We're finally yeah. seeing it. Where has it been for the last 12 years? And what did you think was going to happen to it? Were you just like, well, that's something I painted 12 years ago and whatever? Or did you still think it had life in the world? <laughs> well, you know, I never would have thought, you know, you, you, I mean, we all do work that we think is better than others, sure. you know? Or it's like, you know, you go along, it's all good, it's all good. Oh, I like this one, you know? And so. There are definitely paintings where I go, hmm, yes, this is good. And maybe, maybe this should be hanging someplace important. You know? um, and, and this probably wasn't one of them. You know? This was bought by uh, two collectors of mine who were at our wedding, you know, good friends. Um, but they have a lot. They had a lot of work. Um, and so every once in a while, I'd see it. We don't, we don't see them often, but I'd see it on the wall and go, oh, yeah, OK. You know? And the other paintings. But yeah, I never would have expected it to be here. So it's, yeah, it's kind of like, it, it it's, makes me look at it very differently, even though I said I don't look, you know. But, um, <laughs> but I mean, you know, I had, to, I had to think about it, you know. How do I feel about that, you know? Yeah, you know. Did they, um, they donated it. Yeah, that's how work, for the you know, vast majority of work that ends up in museums ends up there, is that someone gives it, you know. So. Yeah, and I was like, cool. You know, yeah. It's great, you know. Do you ever um, fall in love with yourself so much that you can't let yourself go? <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, no. Like, when I was in the studio, I yeah. had this amazing piece of artwork that yeah. I created. I'm like, I'm not ready. I have to live with this for a while. Yeah. You know, and I got but can life. you? Can you live with it for a while? Can you, I mean, can you actually, or do you ha is it committed somewhere? And you have um, to let it go. It depends on the situation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes when I get commissions, I'm like, oh my gosh, I wish I could do this. <laughs> and sometimes it's like, um, it sits and I, walk, I go back and revisit it. Uh, the studio and, and, yeah. you do, and also, how many paintings do you work on at a time? Because I do yeah. a lot of cross fertilization where I need to be working oh, on yeah. several. Well, I'm having a really bad problem right now with not enough space. Um, and I probably, I mean, I usually have around four going at a time. Um, just so, yeah, that, that's, that's good. But I probably would do more. I, I might do more um, if I had more room. Uh, hopefully we'll be. It's, it's a living room. It's, it's very small. And I keep rearranging it. I mean, we have no living room now because I have a studio, and she has the bedroom as her study, and uh, my talented um, writer wife, Gigi. Um, and you know, so yeah, we, we got to move. Um, but but the thing is, is that I you know I've always known that that work it's it's not staying with me. That doesn't mean like you know there are some paintings like I was saying that like I'm like okay I hope this one go somewhere good, you know, that some, somebody just does, you know, doesn't buy it and it just disappears and no one ever sees it because they don't have any friends, you know, and it's like, you know, <laughs> because, you know, you feel, you feel strongly about some of those, yeah, definitely, yeah. But I know that, you know, it's like I'm a surrogate mother, you know, it's like, it's, it's not staying with me, you know, so, yeah. Yes. Can I just ask you as a film director, mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, this is just a karmic payback for all the times I've had to tell people, just forget there's a camera here. It doesn't matter. We're, we're just having a conversation. And as I'm looking at Steven, I'm just like, hey, there's the camera. There's that red yeah, light. I, I, I know. I'm not seeing it yet. Hi, Cody. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Any other questions for Steven? <laughs> Not, no, actually. Like have a conversation with yourself, with your money selves? Good dinner scene? Or I don't think I have. The Judith. The Judith, yeah. I think that's the only one where I've done more than one. And can you explain that one to us? <laughs> um, well, it's, you know, and we, talk, it, we were talking about the paintings that, you know, you kind of like, go, oh, that's, that's one. That, that, that's one of them where I'm, thank you. Um, where I'm, you know, got a big white dress on, and I'm, you know, got my head thrown back, and a 
got a big dagger in one hand and holding my severed head with the other hand. So it's, you know, the Judith and Holofernes, you know, thing. Um, and what was the, why, why was I bragging about that? I don't know, I just wanted to hear about Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but, but yeah, I mean, I, using her, um, I use her sometimes in things if I need another figure. <laughs> so, and I want to do more of that, and the dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what was it like for you to imagine your severed head? Because you had to have that in your mind's eye, right? Yeah. To be able to paint it? Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, I just sat on the floor, so I was low, and had Gigi take a picture, like, you know, <laughs> like, you know, look real relaxed, you know, like a head would look, you know, so. Yeah, but it was very tidy, you know. There was no blood on the knife, and there's only like a little bit of blood in the... And then on the neck, yeah. So, yeah, I don't want it to be distracting, but yeah, but yeah, yeah, it was it was fun, you know. <laughs> I, so. could, I oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry, I was just gonna say, ask. So, do you always do a mock-up then of what you have in your head that you want to put out there? Do you yeah. always do that? Yeah, um, for the most part. Every once in a while, I'll just kind of like just start with something. But yeah. And I grid stuff out, because um, that makes the process so much easier. Um, otherwise, you know, because I don't actually, I don't draw very well at all. I'm like, it's just really hard for me to draw. And like, you know, the line is not, oh, I'm gonna erase, erase. You know, I mean, I, you know, there are some amazing, you know, Picasso or Sargent or whatever who just are so fluid and they, every, every stroke goes in the right place, you know. Painting isn't so hard, but drawing is really hard. So I have to get the drawing that is on the panel that starts the whole process as precise as I can make it, you know, so. Mm -hmm. This might be a question more for Gigi. Do you discover <laughs> something new about Stephen when you look at his paintings? <laughs> uh, I used to. <laughs> I don't know if I do anymore because I've lived with them mm -hmm. and him for so long, but, um, <laughs> Yeah, I think because he's always doing himself, and he's always doing himself in, in in certain ways. I think that I know I know what I think all the paintings are about, um, and they all seem to be about the same thing, um, about what he wishes he could be. You know, um, so I don't think as much now, but but definitely, you know, as we were as I was discovering his art and. We, we basically met because I <laughs> discovered his art. I went to a, an art show and, and didn't know him and wrote him a fan letter. And, uh, yeah. So that's why I was <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, and her, you know, my particular weirdnesses and her weirdnesses, you know, matched up. You know, she saw, <laughs> you know, she saw these weird paintings of me in a dress in the gallery, and it's like, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, so, yeah, yeah. Yes? You mentioned that uh, you've gotten more and more meticulous in your setup for the photograph. Mm -hmm. No, well, yeah. um, I, I've, I've started to throw stuff away, yeah. I mean, you know, some appalling looking Photoshop things, you know, where, you know, because there's all sorts of weird stuff that if you don't do this, you, you wouldn't know, or like people's heads are too big. So it's like I'll have to like take, you know, a copy of my head and shrink it down, you know, to get the proportions right or, you know, all sorts of weird things and they don't look very good. So I do keep, the what I do, the only discipline I have is when I think of an idea, um, I have like a little little white paper pads, and I will do like a little sketch, some hideous little sketch, just to remind myself. And I do keep those generally because I don't know, they seem like the original thing, you know, that started the whole process. But I, but I basically I know what it's going to look like then, you know, for the most part, you know, I'll add some little thing, but usually I know they look. So I save those because. That seems right. <laughs> uh, you're, you're mostly like in the 18th century, right? That yeah, I'm trying to break out of that a little bit, but yeah, 19th like century. The early 20th century. Well, I'm I'm working on a couple of paintings for the next show um, that are set in the 40s. Ooh. So. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So, and I did yeah the recent little painting I 
dashed off for um, a show at Froelich um, was, I guess, 50s. So, yeah. so did Cindy Sherman have an effect on you at all? Or? Not at all. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, I, in, in a way, my ignorance or my, my intentional ignorance of contemporary art um, I think has helped me because I think there are things I wouldn't do. I think if I had gone to art school, I, I might look at things a whole lot differently. And I don't know that that would have been the best thing for me. Um, I'm very set in my ways, but I'm also very easily influenced by things. So, I mean, part of my being so, uh, is that I, you know, I'm too, I'm too uh, porous in a way, so, yeah. You're very attached to the whole self-talk thing, you know. Well, I am. <laughs> I mean, you know, it was, I was kind of embarrassed because there was an event here for the Northwest Art Council um, where it was lovely to get introduced, but um, Bonnie um, Lang Malcolmson, the curator for this exhibition, gave my credits. Um, and I think it's sometimes if your credits are so, you know, <laughs> unimpressive, it's best to just go with, he's totally self taught. <laughs> <laughs> so that's I learned that lesson because you know MFAs and you know Harvard and you know and then they come to me and you know best in show in Beaverton you know <laughs> so yeah. Well, you know, yeah. I told you the story about uh, I went to a James Labor talk at uh, PDX one time uh, and he started out by saying you know I, I'm a self-taught artist uh, but I mean like there's a caveat to that that uh, uh, virtually every artist that comes out of an academic program in this country is self-taught because all they do is throw some materials out and say, go at it. Mm. They really don't have an academic mm. basis for anything they uh, teach in, in the, uh, the, uh, uh, mm. you know, the, the colleges and universities in this country. You have to mm. go to Europe or, mm. uh, and primarily Central Europe, you get an yeah. academic back. Yeah. So uh, the way of the artist is, you know, no easy journey. And mm. I'd, if it's not too personal, I just wondered if could you talk about how you guys support each other in that? <laughs> I nag <laughs> because she's you know we both have lots of things we're interested in um, and you know she's an amazing writer and that's how most people know her but she's also a graphic designer and she's written kids books and illustrated so you know <laughs> my side of it is nagging her to write more you know <laughs> so um, yeah what yeah, what, what more do you... <laughs> and how does she support mind. you? Mine is by not saying anything. Yeah, not saying anything. Art. Yeah. What you, what you just said was <laughs> how porous, like, how... Yeah. Whatever uh, my word was, like, this. Yeah. Um, how, but also how influential, or influenced, you know, like, easily. Yeah. Is and, um, so, um, we learned <laughs> yeah. early on that yeah. I can look at the art, but if I say it's good, Oh, he's going to think it's bad. Or if I say, if I say anything, he's going to be influenced by it. So I right. basically stay stay back. It kind of freaks so, me out a little bit yeah. until it's and until so it's to a certain point, you know. And then which it's is okay. hard because it's in your living room, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. She, every time she goes to the kitchen, you know, she has to come. Yeah, yeah. But the one time, and and this is a while ago now, but the one time, she, you know, we kind of. She kind of slipped or whatever, and you know, said, "I think you need something down in this corner." And I'm like, "I just about flipped, you know, like, you know, I'm trying to get this work done for this." Oh my god! And then I thought about it. It's like, yeah, I do need something, and I and that's ended up being the best part of the painting. So, <laughs> by far, you probably should. Yeah, I didn't say that. Oh, yeah. No. Oh, okay. Because you're being introduced by a filmmaker. God, yeah. I just thought, I'd, um, I know that a lot of your influences are films, yeah. so I thought maybe you could talk to us about your uh, film influences. Well, you know, it's a little hard to um, say what they are. I mean, I love film. I love classic film. Um, I love lots of different kind of films. And, you know, just, just you know, I am a huge fan of his work. And, and yeah, Very sweet of you. Thank you. Man, yeah. Um, and I don't, I don't like a whole lot of things, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, totally. Um, <laughs> but, but you know, I was thinking about that because you know, I was, I was afraid that you know, I, was, I said to everybody, people are going to come to this thinking we're going to be talking about film, and they're going to wonder what I'm doing here because you know he's the he's you know whatever, um, he's he's that guy anyway. Um, <laughs> but you know, I started thinking about film, and it's like you know, I think a lot of of 
the process of making work for me is is taking a story um, and and making it two dimensional um, and and also framing things. I mean, film, you know, things are happening, and and you have to you have to put the story in this frame. And I think in some ways it's it's at least as has been at least as influential as you know uh, paintings on a wall um, because in some ways it's more you know it's moving yeah. <laughs> you know um, but but yeah compositionally um, definitely um, and and you know stories drama um, something's going on there you know it isn't a still life you know so. So you mentioned you're working on your next show. Do mm -hmm. you know when and where that will be? Um, yeah, up in Seattle at Winston Walker at the end of July. And then I'm also scheduled here next um, May at, at Froelich, my gallery here. And um, even though those are ridiculously close together, those, those shows, um, next May will be the 20th anniversary of me being a professional artist. So I just like, I want to do something for oh, that's that. Great. So yeah, so that'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah, and we're trying to, trying to buy a house in, in there somewhere. <laughs> With a big living room. Yeah, well, <laughs> no. <laughs> With a <the> studio. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Thank I believe you. now there are refreshments. Yeah. Yeah.